Hello, physical science students. We are working today on energy forms and changes. This is in FET. You have the link on your lab sheet. Your lab sheet should look like this. Um, energy forms and changes in the FET simulation. To get the simulation going, you just press, press play. We're gonna start in the intro. And there are a few things to note here in the intro um, activity. The energy symbols here show how much energy is held in that object. We cannot normally see energy. So um, this, these symbols help us see the energy. They're not molecules, they're not matter. It's energy that's moving here and we normally can't see it, but these symbols in the simulation help us see the energy. The other thing um, you can do up here is link the heaters. If you want to add heat to a system, you can simply turn up the flame. If you want to add, you want to cool a system, you can add ice here. And if you want both of the heaters to do the same thing at the same time, you can link the heaters. This causes a little bit of confusion for students. So things you can do is you can put water up here, you can boil water. And we know water is boiling when we see steam. Just like if you're making mac and cheese or noodles on the stove and you're boiling water, you kind of know when the pot lid starts to rattle and the steam starts to escape that the water is boiling. And you can see that right here. And we can see that energy is starting to transfer out of this pot of water into the air with the steam. The steam is carrying the heat energy. If we want to freeze the water, we can add ice. And you can see the ice is leaving the pot of water and going into the ice to melt the ice. So the ice isn't transferring cold, the water is transferring heat um, into the ice to melt it. And we don't see the ice melt here in the simulation. That's one limit of the simulation. Um, another th thing you can do in the simulation is you can put the iron and the brick on the heat at the same time. We'll need to link heaters for this. And you can see the energy symbols in the iron. You could count them and you could count them in the brick here. They're a little bit different. And if we heat them, they behave a little bit differently. Um, watch what happens. Oops. Um, watch when they start to give off heat. When heat starts to travel into the atmosphere, each of them and look at how many energy symbols are being held by the iron versus the brick. I'll give you a hint to the questions that involve comparing iron versus brick. When we make radiators, like there's a radiator in my house, um, it is made of iron, a lot of cast iron, because iron is really good at hanging on to heat that's brought to these radiators with hot water um, that's pumped around a building into the radiators and they radiate that uh, heat out of the radiator very slowly. It transfers from the water to the iron in the radiator to the room nice and slowly and keeps the room at a very even temperature. We can stack the two um, objects and you notice as iron heats up, um, some of the energy is transferred to the brick and then it leaves the iron brick system. I don't need to link my heaters anymore. So that's what you need to know to use the simulation for questions for part one, questions one through eight. You can use the simulation yourself and answer the questions. I've given the, you the tools you need to know to answer those questions. Let's switch over to systems here. You'll notice you can make a number of systems by clicking on different elements. Um, this isn't gonna do any good here. The sun is for when you have a solar panel. Um, you can put different things in this part of the system. You can boil water, you can have two kinds of light bulbs. This is an incandescent light bulb and this is a compact full fluorescent light bulb. We also have LED light bulbs and this is a fan. Um, so we need to look at the lab sheet for how we're going to construct the first 
energy system here. I'm going to turn on the energy symbols and it's important that you know what these energy symbols stand for. The gray is mechanical energy. If we put a generator in here and use some water to turn the generator, we'll turn on the water right here. You can see that mechanical energy is present when water is falling. That's mechanical potential energy. It's going through the generator and the generator is making electrical energy. You can see the dotted line E's right here that represents an energy transformation be between mechanical energy of the generator rotating and electrical energy here. If we see red energy symbols, those are thermal. We saw those in part one. Um, we can also see light energy. We saw that coming out of the sun. And chemical energy is um, green and that's when we have a human is ingesting some food and burning chemical energy and getting mechanical energy. So let's go into the lab sheet here and look at the first system that we're going to work on. We need to make a system where we have a teapot, a generator, and an incandescent bulb. And then you're going to fill in what kind of energy is converted to the next kind of energy that's converted to the next kind of energy. Um, and you want to use these symbols. Uh, you, they're on your lab sheet and they're also in the simulation. So let's click on the teapot here in the simulation. The generator is already engaged here. And we will click on the incandescent light bulb. And then we can heat up the teapot. This is similar to like what happens at a coal burning plant, except it's much more complicated. If you burn coal or natural gas, um, you use heat energy to um, turn water into steam. That turns a generator, and that generator produces electrical energy. So we have heat energy here. We have um, mechanical energy of turning the generator here. We have an energy transformation here as the mechanical energy is transferred into electrical energy. And then up in the bulb, you can see that we have thermal energy. It has to turn into thermal energy, and then it turns into the yellow light energy symbols. I know it's thermal energy it's, because it's red. I know it's light energy because it's yellow. So there are various systems that you need to set up for part two. You can do that by using the symbols underneath to create the system you need in the picture. The only tricky one is um, a solar system where you have the sun and then you have a solar panel. There's no um, bike or water or teapot here. There's just the sun and a solar panel and a light bulb. So let's go to part three in the lab here and check out what else we need to do. So part three um, is on heat transfer. And this is a little bit of a trickier um, sim. So we'll switch sims and we'll look at how this sim works and the different shapes of the graphs we need to pay attention to. So part three uses a sim that looks like this. I got here from this link uh, under part three in your lab sheet. Um, specific heat is the amount of heat um, an object can hang on to. Um, metals tend to hang on to a lot of energy. Water is very good. It has a high specific heat. It doesn't cool down or heat up very quickly. Um, uh, other things with low specific heat are perhaps the sweater you're wearing or a baseball hat. Um, they change temperature qu quite quickly. Um, so it says play with the simulation, set the specific heats of the right and left block to many different values and watch the graph until the two lines meet. So here's um, the specific heat of the left block, the orange block. And here's the specific heat of the right block. We'll set that really high. We'll hit play and we'll see what happens. Woo. The temperature of block one, the one with low specific heat, just plummeted, which 
is predictable based because specific heat, low specific heat means your temperature is going to fluctuate very quickly where the block with high specific heat is barely changing its temperature at all. Let's look at what happens when we set them to about the same. So we'll set it to 2000 and to 2000 and look at the shape of this graph. Let's reset it here before we do that. The reset button is up in the corner. It's the little curly Q arrow. Let's hit play. You notice the graph is symmetrical. So both the red and the green line are cooling at the same rate because both of these blocks have the same specific heat this time. And our graph just looks like you took a piece of paper and folded it in half and created two perfectly symmetrical lines. So now let's go to the lab sheet here. What does it mean when the T1, the red line, and T2, the green line, meet? Well, T1 is from the left block, and T2 is from the right block. So when those lines meet, it means it's gotten to the same temperature. So here it's perfectly symmetrical. Um, T1, the first block on the left, has cooled 15 degrees, and block uh, T2 of the block on the right has increased 15 degrees. So they've come to the middle, they're sharing their heat equally because they both have the same heat capacity here. So we've already set the capacity to be the same. So we can see we get a very symmetrical line when they're the same. Let's go back and do very different again. I'll reset this. I always forget to reset. So we can see that this is not symmetrical. The red line is just plunging down and the green line's barely moving at all. That's because the green, um, the red is pretty much giving all of its, the heat from the, the T1 is going all over to the T2 side and T2 is keeping that heat. And so they're meeting in, uh, meeting in the middle. The energy is transferred from the left block to the right block. The left block loses a lot of heat energy to the right block. It's transferred to the right block and the right block in turn goes up just a tiny bit because it's high specific heat capacity means that it doesn't change temperature very quickly. So you should be able to answer question 14 now. Question 15 says set both blocks to a low heat capacity. Run the model until they reach the same temperature. How long did it take? And then run the model with both blocks set to a high heat capacity. Run the model until they reach the same temperature. How long did that take? And why were their times different? Well, I'll help you set this up. So if we set them, let's reset. We'll set them both really low and we'll hit play. And boom, they hit about the same temperature in about, uh, I think that's 38 seconds. So we'll say low heat capacity, 38 seconds at 100 kilograms. times C. I'm going to make my answers in a different color because you should always do that in this class. And what do you notice about the really, oh, we have to do them both high. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to set both blocks to high here. And we'll see how long it takes to get to the same temperature this time. It's taking a little bit longer here. We're at a minute, uh, two minutes. We're going to be waiting a while. 
for these two because heat capacity means you hang on to your thermal energy really well and you change temperatures very slowly. So these two blocks, even though they're sharing their thermal energy, it's being transferred from one block to the other, it's happening very slowly because of their high heat capacity. They're really hanging on to that heat and um, transferring it very slowly. This is why iron is great for radiators. It transfers its heat to the room very slowly. Instead of heating up really quick, getting red hot, and then cool, cooling off, it can stay warm for a long time and you can tuck your feet under the radiator and get them nice and warm or dry your mittens or whatever we do here in chilly Minnesota. So we'll call it even. It took 14 minutes versus 38 seconds. That's quite a bit of time. We'll turn everything green here. So high heat capacity is 14 minutes and how many seconds? Let's go look. 14 minutes and nine seconds at 5,000 kilograms times degrees Celsius. The times to reach the same temperature were very different because of the different heat capacity. blocks with high heat capacity, heat and cool slowly. What do you notice about the relationship between the difference in the two heat capacity and the times it takes to reach the same temperature? Well, I've noticed if the heat capacities are the same, we get a very symmetrical graph. And if they're both high, it takes a very long time to, for them to get to the middle. If they're very different, let's reset here and go very different very high, very low, it doesn't take as much time for them to equilibrate or get to the same temperature because the one with the low heat capacity will change heat, will change its temperature very quickly and um, it, the heat energy will transfer to the block with the higher heat capacity. That will happen also if we run it the other way around where we make this one high heat capacity, this one low. You'll see the same sort of pattern. It's just the um, now the block on the right, T2, has the lower heat capacity and the red line. Um, its temperature is going down this time, but it's still um, very temperate. It's not, its temperature is not going up and down very quickly. It's still very an even steady temperature if it has a high heat capacity over here on the left side. The heat capacity here is 5,000 versus 100. So now you have all the information you need to answers questions 1 through 16 on lab 3.2, energy forms and changes in the FET simulation and also the Concord Consortium situation or simulation. Thank you both to FET and Concord Consortium to, for providing excellent simulations for our class. This is Dr. B signing out on energy forms and changes.